Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, What's New in ISAMSERV 2018? Okay, so welcome. My name is Honorata Frings. I will moderate this webinar today, while Nick McFerrin will show and explain to you all the new enhancements and new functions in ISAMSERV 2018. This webinar will be recorded, and you can rewatch it on our Katir Creative Design community or as a webinar on demand on 3ds.com. At the end of this webinar, you can ask questions and we will have some information on future webinars and events for you. If you have any questions in between, please raise a hand or write it into the question window. And now I switch to Nick. Have fun with the webinar. Thank you, Honorata. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today to take a look at the uh, ISENSERV 2018 release. So um, I've got a few slides to go through and some live demos and some videos. Uh, I'll be very happy to take your questions at the end. Um, the, uh, the presentation is going to go through the usual topics of packaging, highlights, uh, licensing and additional information. I'm going to skip through the, uh, the less interesting slides and get to the juicy stuff uh, as quickly as we can. And we can look at the details later if necessary. So, ISMSurf, um, a wonderful tool. Um, so, DASA system is determined to continue to deliver uh, ISMSurf as the explicit Class A modeling solution to the industry. Uh, we are sustaining our customer engagement. We spend a lot of time talking to our customers and listening to our customers. Uh, so, DASA wishes to consolidate the portfolio. What this means is, we have a very diverse range of products at DASA System, and we're trying to make them work better together. That's our continuous goal, to bring our products closer together to make it easier for our customers. So uh, the, uh, the main tool that uh, we interface with is Katia, of course. So uh, ISMSurf and Katia are getting closer and closer together. It's getting easier to do, and um, it's, uh, they're very the, uh, it makes it easy for everybody to share that information backwards and forwards. Also, uh, we're pushing closer to our visualization tools uh, like DeltaGen, for example, and also the visualization tools on the 3D Experience platform like Live Rendering. So as you know, IsomSurf has been continuously developing for quite some time. Uh, so now we're looking at IsomSurf 2018. We have uh, 25 major enhancements, and ISMSERV 2018 was launched in April of this year. Every single one of our enhancements is customer driven. So if there's something that you'd like ISMSERV to do or something you'd like to change, I would encourage you to contact us through your technical contacts or through your account contacts to request enhancements to the software. Because every single one of these is coming from uh, an ISMSERV user from a large OEM or from a small contractor, it doesn't matter. Uh, if we can do it, we, we will. So here we can see uh, the add-on modules and the data exchange tools. You can see the highlight there at the top, the uh, a new module is ISMSurf HMD. So HMD stands for Head Mounted Display. Its code name is K63. I'm sure you recognize all the other uh, modules like scan and advanced tools and safety. And over on the right hand side, you can see the, the student edition and the academic edition. And we have the uh, exchange tools in the middle. And everything sits on top of ISMSurf Professional. So looking at K63 uh, or ISMSurf HMD, there's a prerequisite for ISMSurf real-time renderer to run the software in ISMSurf. Um, I'll come back to the, the details of this product a little bit later, um, but it's, it's sold in a bundle. It's offered in a bundle to our customers. So I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Uh, these two packages are still available um, as value packages to our customers. Uh, so if you, it's, a, it's a good value bundle because the cost together is less than buying them individually. So down to the nitty gritty. So the first one is uh, in styling corner, we have added the chord length option. This is a continuation of making sure that useful functions in some parts of ISMSurf are available in others. So it's very usual, very common to use the chord 
uh, cord length for filleting. Uh, so what we've done here is we've added it to styling corner. Here's a short video showing you how it works. It's pretty much as you would expect. So this is just a radius based and we have the three options. And now we can change the radius to cord length. And we have these nice interactive handles you can see on the left and you can choose uh, the different levels of quality that you need from the menu. It's fairly self-explanatory. Okay. And the next one. So, uh, curved blend. Uh, you may remember in ISOMSEF 2017, I think it was, we added a minimum radius to um, the styling corner. Well, it's a very useful function. Um, personally, I use the curve blend command more often. So we've now added the check minimum radius to, uh, to the curve blend function as well, right here. A useful addition. Uh, this is a small enhancement. Uh, what we've done now is you've seen these little handles popping up across lots of different functions where you display these little arrows with a little switch on. Well, now um, for modify curve segment, we can directly click on these little arrows to change the direction. I see this will be very useful for the profile command, for example. Now, here's a short video showing it working. So you can see that the the one uh, the sevens are going the wrong way. So if we click on those, you can just pop them around. Very straightforward. Oh, this is a nice one, uh, global trim. Uh, finally, uh, this is something that uh, I've been waiting for for some time. Uh, it's the ability to trim uh, many things with one click. So we can use uh, global trim with objects which are surface-based objects uh, or the plane. So here we have some curves. So first of all, you pick the objects to be cut or trimmed, I should say. And then we pick the surface. And then we choose the active region. You can pick any on any of the geometry and it trims them all in one go. A nice, helpful function. Okay, so here we have the match command. So as you know, it's a very large and complex tool, uh, version three, we call it. Um, lots of different options. So um, what we started in previous releases is we've added variants here. What a variant allows you to do is store your favorite uh, options or ticks or numbers and give it a name. For example, a quick fillet or a tangent fillet or a curvature fillet and so on. But what you may have noticed before is some of the options you couldn't actually store in the variant. So you would change variants, but you still have to make some small changes. What we've done now is we've added an awful lot more functions into uh, as a choice for your variant for matching. So all the options under parameter are now available and all the options under diagnosis and the symmetry as well. Symmetry was the big one for me. So now this has been added. So you can save your variant and you've got a lot more choice to add to be remembered. This is one of my favorite ones, um, very useful. I'm sure we've all spent a long time tidying up the control point mesh, just to make it look nice from certain points of view, just to line them up. It's a very normal workflow. So what we've done is we've added this option under control points called plane. And these two drop downs are available where we've got some choices. We've got trace and we've got normal. Okay, so we can access this function from uh, standard ISOMSERF and also from unified modeling. Okay, so in unified modeling mode, 
we can click here on this option, which is uh, the plane, and then we can choose uh, the uh, the option for aligning the control points on a plane, and you can choose the direction, normal or tangent. What I'm going to do is show it, show you how it works on Isomsurf. So give me a moment. Uh, here we go. All right. Uh, okay, I wanted this one. Okay, so here we've got a patch. Pretty messy, I'm sure you'll agree. Messy control points there. I hope you can see it okay. So I'm going to modify my control points. Here we are. And I'm on the plane option right now. You can see the four different options, trace, three points, approximate, and free. So trace uh, is uh, where you do a trace plane. I'll give you an example right away. So you pick the first point and the last point, and then the system put a plane normal to the screen. So I'll show you how that works. So here's the first control point. Here's the last control point. And then you pick the row. And you see what's happened there? It's put the plane normal to the screen. It's tidied them up for me. Now, you might be wondering which way did the control points move? Well, they moved in the, the normal direction to the plane there. But you can also specify tangent. So if I undo that and do that again, so from here to here on this row, but that was now a tangent movement. So if we look to the side, I'll do undo and redo. And you'll see how those are beautifully tidy control point rows. Or control points, I should say. Other options, you've got three points. So this is how you define the plane to which they're going to be aligned. So I can click uh, one, two. OK. That was just two, wasn't it? Well, the first one was already picked. Approximate, this does as you might expect. I'm going to go back to uh, normal. Approximate will just fit a plane through all of the control points on a row and then fit them to that plane in one click. There we go. So that's the equivalent of defining a plane yourself using approximate and then moving them in a normal direction. The final one is free. And free is very interesting because what this allows us to do is define any plane. I'm just going to move this one around a little bit. There we go, something like that. And lift that up a smidge so you can see what I'm doing. It's a bit extreme. There we go. And now I pick on any control point row, and it moves them directly onto that plane. I think this is really nice functionality. I, I know I spent a very long time tidying up control points, manually constructing these planes. So uh, it's really super that uh, this has been built in. I think it's a great fit, and I, I think this is my favorite functionality uh, in core Isensoft. OK, let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation, I should say. There we go. There we go. So that functionality is available in classic interface Isensoft and also in unified modeling. OK, now this is a useful feature. How many times have you used global offset, but something hasn't gone quite right, uh, and you perhaps want to delete it and do, it and do something differently? Or alternatively, uh, you want to make the offset a different color from the main surface? What Isomsurf used to do is it would put the patches and faces into the same molecule as before. So this made it rather tricky to, if you wanted to delete it or uh, pick it in one go, it was rather tricky because it was very close uh, in, in distance, if you like, to the, uh, the master surface. Well, now what it does, just to make your life much easier, when you do a global offset, it puts it, it's in the same part, but it makes a fresh molecule for it automatically. So that makes it super easy to uh, delete it or select it or make it a different color or whatever. So a really, uh, really convenient addition to uh, the global offset command. OK, we've got two which are a little bit similar um, for accelerated surface and the gap command. You may have noticed, if you use these commands, that sometimes uh, Isomsurf doesn't split the geometry it's creating in the right places. OK, you see in this top picture, this is a, a face edge in red. 
and you can see that it's created this accelerated surface and it's not split it at the right place. This is not really acceptable for, for a high-end class A delivery. Um, so what you would typically do is you'd have to split it here and you can see other places. So, uh, so the, uh, the surface has not been split right there. I'm going to give you a live demo in a moment just to make it clear for you what's going on. But what the surf, what ISOM surf will do now is if you switch on this divide on ref option, it will deliberately split the geometry it creates at the breaks in the, uh, in the base surface, in the reference surface. Okay, the same for the gap command. It's similar functionality. It's been added down here, divide on surface one and surface two. So let's take a look at ISOM. Okay. So here's my geometry, there's my curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a gap on this curve right here, on these surfaces. Okay, now the new option is right here where it says divide. At the moment it's switched off. So I'm gonna do, do a before and after for you. So if I just say, okay, right now, you can see that it, it's not done the greatest result and you can see this fillet here for example it's not been split at the edge of this at the tan line of this fillet or blend i should say so if we uh, i'm going to undo that and check the uh, divide on surface one and surface two and do that again there we go it's uh, actually split it there for me so this gives me uh, a much more useful piece of geometry with the splits in the right places. All right. Oh, and there's a video here. There's no need to see the video. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. Um, so in the matching diagnostics, we now have real-time uh, feedback on the the scaling of the diagnostic right here. So what that means is uh, as you slide the, the sliders back and forth, the curvature diagnostic will update in real time. So this is a request from one of our customers who, who like to have real time feedback of these diagnostics. Uh, it's similar to the functionality that you get uh, in, in Katia. So now uh, with apply immediately, you can uh, then have this updating uh, really quickly, really nicely. Here's another one. I'm sure you've all done this in the past when you've got um, your curvature diagnostics. Sometimes you don't want to see the red lines. So you make the scaling 0 0.001 or something really small so you can't see it. We've all done this, I'm sure. So what we can do now is rather than having to artificially scale down the red lines, uh, you can now just switch them off with uh, just the bar option. Sorry, so bar is on the left, line option is on the right. So just the line just shows the yellow line at the top of the diagnostic. Okay, we've made a change to the uh, curvature diagnostic. Um, we've improved the way the shading is carried out to give more feedback to the viewer. Remember again, this was a customer request they were not happy with the way that the colors were blending. So you can see on the image on the left, it's a much smoother transition from this uh, yellow over to the red color in this area. It gives it more feedback for the, uh, for the diagnostic. So it's been, it's been an improved presentation. We also still have the, the two color option right here. So it's just one or the other color, according to what you define in your min and max curvature. The inspect option has been improved. Uh, this allows you, when you have uh, your curvature diagnostic on the model, you can just click your mouse anywhere on the on the face or the or the patch, and it'll give you real time feedback as to what uh, what you have there. What 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 is the curvature in that direction? A nice feature. Okay. Um, We've made some improvements to the sections command. Um, in previous releases, the only way 
if you were using Reference Manager in previous releases, the only way you could actually click onto the reference geometry for producing a section would be in the graphical mode here. What we've done now is we've added the trace and the points options as well, so that now when you are uh, selecting your geometry in either, the, either of these options for defining a section, you can then pick on the reference geometry. So you don't have to import it into your session anymore. You can actually do it directly from the reference manager information. Another enhancement we've made to uh, the sections, you remember recently we, we've uh, added the, uh, the width, the width of the sections you can adjust to make them thin or fat. We've now added that to the dynamic section as well. Okay, so here's uh, an important enhancement to safety analysis. I'm sure we've all noticed in modern cars um, that uh, you, we're getting a lot of sharp feature lines on the sides of the vehicles, or bone lines, you might call them. It's, uh, it's kind of fashionable to add these styling features to the vehicles. So this has changed a little bit the way uh, the safety regulations are defined. Um, so let me go to the next slide and maybe explain it a little bit more. But what I'm talking about here is the, the bone line here, or the tornado, coming down the side of the vehicle, all right? So I'm gonna to go to this slide. So this is exactly what's going on. I'm gonna go backwards and forwards a little bit. So this is a section through uh, the feature here, the tornado. And the regulations stipulate that the radius on the, on the feature must be greater than a tenth of the H factor. And the H factor is this distance between the tip of the fillet and this circle, the touching points of a circle of a defined diameter. So the, in this case, the diameter is 165 millimeters. So the uh, circle fits here and here. It's touching the upper and lower surfaces. And this is the H factor defined from that, from that circle. It's pretty complex. I'm sure you'll agree with me. Um, and what I would say is if, you, if you'd like to read up on exactly what's going on here, you can take a look at these different directives from the European regulations, the Economic Commission for Europe. You make a note, R21 and R26. I, I have to admit I've not personally read them, but um, what, the, what the tool is giving you here, I'm going to go back a couple of slides. This diagnostic is giving you uh, that H value. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not going to make your models perfect for you, but what it is giving you is this excellent analysis as to what the H factor is doing. And it's also interesting because you can see in this example, the diagnostic is showing us that it's a nice and very smooth flow. There aren't any spikes or wobbles. So this means that the, the tornado line will appear very smooth and very even. You can see here that there's a bit of a wobble as it goes over the eyebrow of the front wheel arch which you would expect because it's breaking through here a little bit. All right, but these are new European homologation regulations and this particular requirement is customer specified and the customer actually helped us to define the function. So in the homologation department, this should be uh, very, very useful indeed. Oh, and here's a short video of it working. So here's the tornado line, this uh, sharp feature running down the body side. I'm changing to tornado. So we pick the patches above the tornado line and then below. And then finally, we pick the tornado itself. And execute the command. And here's the diagnostic that it gives us. So it's very quick and easy to set up. And it gives us this, this information that's really quite difficult to calculate manually. 
I wouldn't say quite difficult, I'd say very difficult. So a very specific tool, but if it's your job to calculate these values, well then, it's gonna save you an awful lot of time. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to infrastructure. You've noticed in the more recent releases of IsomSurf, we have the toolbar, at the, uh, which can be at the top or bottom of the screen. What we've done now is we've added it to be visible in full screen mode. You know, when you press scroll lock and then IsomSurf, uh, it goes just to the graphics window and all the menus disappear. What we can do is in full screen mode, we can also request that uh, that remains visible, okay? So, all right, moving on. Right, okay, preferences. Um, so this is, uh, this is a useful uh, request from a customer that uh, they do a lot of work on a laptop, but quite often they have to go and do a presentation on a power wall. And uh, they were complaining that it was uh, painful for them to constantly reset their preferences. So what we've done is we have given them the choice to just a second, just plugging in something for later. My HTC Vive controllers are, need to be charged, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, what this means is you can set up your user preferences according to the laptop you're using or the user that you are or the job that you're doing at the time. So you can store, just like a variant for your fillet, you can now store your user preferences in the same way. All right, so we've made a change to mirror, the mirror command. Uh, this is quite interesting. What we've done here is for the what I used to call the local mirror or the override mirror, you can choose your mirror plane, of course you can, but we've got a new option here where you can decide what you pick, if what you're, pick, what you're picking is going to be mirrored or it's not going to be mirrored, all right? Um, this is... Uh, this is really nice because sometimes you only want to mirror parts of your vehicle, obviously. So this overrides the F8 button. And then what you want to do, so if you've defined a different mirroring situation, um, then you can go back to default mode by pushing the reset button. So I think I'm just going to show you that. It's, 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 it doesn't explain too nicely. So let's uh, just make a new list here. Okay, I'm just going to make a patch and just show you how it works. Okay, and let's make a copy of that. Oops, I'll tell you what, let's pull it out a little and then duplicate. All right, so classic mirror, as you know, there we go. it's just F8. Shade that up. So F8 or F6, and the new mirror functionality is here. So you choose whether, it, is what you're picking going to be mirrored or not going to be mirrored? So you can choose which way around you want to do it according to your convenience. So if I just now say select, I only want to mirror this patch, you'll see what's happened here. The, the reflection of the second patch has disappeared. I'm now toggling F8 and F6. And you'll see what's happening. So the second patch is no longer being mirrored. If I now, I can now deactivate the situation here, and that goes back to the standard behavior, or I can activate it, and if I just push reset, that also will take it back to the standard behavior. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay. So we've added a lovely feature with uh, view animation. So this is popular in some other Dasso softwares. What this offers uh, the viewer, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with me when you're working, of course you're perfectly aware of the front view, the side view and the top view. But sometimes if you're in a presentation situation or you have an audience watching what's going on or you're just explaining uh, your work to somebody else, they can get a little bit lost with which 
which view are they actually looking at? Okay, so we've added an animation sequence. You can specify animation in parallel mode or in perspective mode, and you can also specify the duration, how long the animation is going to take. So I have a short movie explaining this. Here it is. All right. So this is classic behavior. The model snaps instantaneously to the views. Again, if you're an experienced user, this isn't a problem, but it's a little confusing to a viewer, I would say. So here we go. We switched on the animation with a 0.9 second duration, and there we go. So it's nice and smooth. It's much easier for the viewer to appreciate exactly what they're looking at. OK, um, we've made some changes to materials. Um, one uh, customer has said that they never use the, the basic materials uh, from one through five. And they just don't want to see them anymore. So what we've done is we've added an option where you can say in preferences that you can't assign them anymore, OK? Because the customer just wanted that ability just, just to forget about them. So this is something you can switch on and off as you need to. So we've also added the count that you can see in brackets here, how many materials uh, belong in a particular group. All right, so um, that's a, a similar option here. So this, this is a preferences option where you can say default materials are not accessible. So just let me show you what goes on there. So here we go. So here's the materials menu as you're used to seeing. And then if we look at preferences, Display, here we go. Default materials not accessible. If I switch this on, it makes the default materials disappear. Okay. So this means they cannot be assigned to your geometry. They're still the default. Uh, the green color is still the default material for shaded patches, uh, but you can't actually assign it to anything else. Okay. That's, of course, with uh, individual enabled. Now, you can also access this uh, ability if you use your right mouse button up here on the group menu. So you can also hide them from display. So you can kind of access this from two different places. So here I'm toggling it off and on in preferences. And you can also do it here with your right mouse button. So this is tidying up your materials display. So instead of having the same five colors right here at the top every time, you can actually have the materials that you want to see underneath. OK, so here's a change that we've made to the reference manager. Um, as you know, we've made an awful lot of changes to Reference Manager over the last few releases. Some very powerful things we can do now with it. So this is a continuation of that improvement. Um, we've added merge variants. Now, I see this could be very useful where if you're trying to make some choices between different variants, so you might have two or three different bumper styles and two or three different um, fender styles or whatever, um, and you're making some choices as to what you want to move forward with, you could then, in your review, um, you could decide which is the chosen style from other variants, and then you could make a new merged variant of just the accepted variants moving forward, the accepted style, okay? So the ability to merge variants together is a very handy uh, handy way to move to, to to make your choices clear. So merge variants, it's a continuation of what we can do. What you need to do is use uh, your control, and you control click on the variants here. And then in your right mouse button, you get the merge variants option added to these other options. These ones have been there in IsonSurf before. And this is the new addition to what we can do here. OK, so um, this, again, a specific request. One of our customers has asked us, when we're exporting Reference Manager sessions, if we have put a tick in the Reference Manager, Reference Manager display 
per column. That is now recorded uh, when you export. Um, that's the, sorry, I've jumped one. Auto activate reference magnetic display. So if you, uh, this option here, if this is on, IsomSurf Reference Manager will remember and the next time you load your session, what tick boxes you had in the Reference Manager display column. Okay, so it basically records this in your session, fi in your session file. The first option, which I skipped over, sorry for that, was uh, export related groups only. So this again means um, when you're exporting a Reference Manager file, if you have this setting to off, all your groups are exported. But if you switch it on, only the groups that are currently being referenced in Reference Manager are exported. It's to stop you saving lots and lots of data over and over again. So this gives you the opportunity to only save what you need, what you need to, to keep your session smaller. It'll speed up your loading times and so on. Okay, so um, this is a nice little one. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it on my my screen, but uh, when you start IsomSurf, you get two little icons in your toolbar on your windows, okay? And they both look the same. So what we've done is uh, we have added, or we changed the way that the, uh, the background icon looks. You get this white one with this little cog symbol, all right? What this, this is for the console window. If you're only running one session, you might think that it's not, it's not a big deal to click between one and the other, but since we went to DSLS licensing, I know a lot of customers have three or four IsomSurf sessions running at the same time. So having these as different colors actually makes it easier to distinguish the graphics window from the background window. And here's another one with save settings. Um, what this means is, should IsomSurf crash, as it's crashing, it records where your manipulators are. For example, your lights. As you know, if you crash out of IsomSurf and you come back in, all your light settings are forgotten. Well, now IsomSurf will remember where your lights were. We've made some small extra functions or commands available for our PLM link customers. Um, so what this means is, uh, They've um, added PLM link opens up uh, the background commands for a PLM system, and uh, we've added it's a specific set of commands that we have uh, allowed access to. And this is just letting you know that uh, we've added these three extra commands to the list. It's like an application, um, an API, an application program interface. All right. So continuing the theme of adding variants to things, as you know, um, with the ISOM file or the ISOM VB file, we can store all kinds of different things, lots of different options to choose from. So it just made sense to add, like in other parts of IsomSurf, the ability to add variants. So you may, for a variant, for example, you may have a supplier who, who doesn't want any curve information, who doesn't want the planes. So you could give your variant name supplier one. And then a different supplier might have different requirements. You could make it supplier two and so on. So uh, this uh, is a handy way to make sure that you're sending the right data to the right people and you don't make any mistakes. Uh, I don't know about you, but certainly in the past, I've forgotten to tick on in the geometry tab curves sometimes and uh, when I meant to, and you only find out you know, three weeks later that you missed off the geometry. So this is a tool that if you get used to using it, you can define the right set of export options and uh, hopefully it'll save you some time and uh, stop you from uh, missing things out. Okay, so here we come to um, IsomSurf HMD. That stands for Head Mounted Display. So we're aiming uh, this tool for Class A modelers and reviewers who want to use IsomSurf. So, this is uh, an entry-level virtual reality experience. Um, it's sold uh, as controlled availability. This means that you need to talk to your account manager about getting it. Uh, it's a special piece of software. 
that you have to get separately to your regular ice and surf. Ice and surf HMD is a part of a VR bundle, which also includes the virtual reality functions on the 3D experience platform. Now you don't need to use the 3D experience platform to access ice and surf VR, but it's included in the bundle. And so you can actually try it out and see what you think. Uh, the reason this is happening is because ice and surf VR is going to be kept uh, simple and easy. We don't want to make it over complex, but uh, that's a system strategy for virtual reality is on the platform. It's going to be a much more immersive and collaborative experience. It's not really appropriate for uh, ice and surf uh, engine. So we're giving you the option to have both. So it's sold as a bundle together that complement each other. So um, looking at ice and surf HMD, uh, I think the best way to tell you about it is just to show it to you. So I'm, I'm fortunate that I have my HTC Vive right here next to me. But uh, before we go in there, I'm just going to say how it works. Um, when you put it on, you're put into a virtual world, which is defined by your ice and surf environment. So your, uh, your environment, your um, uh, HDRI lighting and so on. But uh, when you're inside VR, you've got three navigation modes, examine, walk, and fly. And you can toggle through these options with your controller. So I'm going to put on my headset and uh, show you what it looks like. So just if you give me a minute, take off my glasses. So here's Ice and Surf with a nice model of the Mini. And just to show you where it is, I'll just uh, call that again. So under licenses, you'll see, there we go. So I've got my real-time renderer. And with the real-time renderer, we get K63 HMD. So you'll see I've already got that ticked on. This introduces a new menu here called head-mounted display. There it is. And you get this simple dialog. So the different options we have here, this tells me that I've detected my HTC Vive. This is my starting mode, so I'm going to start in a walk mode. Speed, this is quite important uh, for new users. Um, one is a, perhaps a little fast, so you might want to slow it down. I'm quite comfortable with, with uh, the speed of one. Um, demonstrate is just that I want to be able to show you the model. So rather than the current view, it's a, a standard view. My offset, I'm leaving at zero. And we have different levels of anti-aliasing. So I'm going to start with uh, 16 and see how that looks. So we'll push the start command. And uh, what we have here, this is my, uh, my HTC Vive window. So I'm going to maximize this. I hope you can see it OK. What I'm going to do is switch on, well, put on my headset. Here it is. Pick up my controllers. So I can no longer see, I can no longer see you guys or what I'm doing, but let me just put my controllers on. Whoops, just hit the desk. All right, so I've got my controllers and here's the car. With the toggle button, which is, sorry, the grip button, which is this oval shape button underneath, I can push this and it cycles through the different modes, okay? So in walk mode, I can walk away or towards. So this is my right thumb I'm pushing. Okay, and my left thumb, I can spin it around. Now, I'm aware that there may be a bit of lag on the webinar, but I can tell you I'm really pleased with the smooth experience that I'm getting here in my office. Oh. Okay, Nick is back online. Can you hear me, Anurata? Yes, we can hear you again. I have just informed everyone on the webinar and the user meeting so far. Um, so okay. <laughs> just to um, use the time we have um, about the yeah. European user meeting, you will be informed on social media, invitations via email, and also on the 3ds.com event pages. So I give back to you. Okay. Well. I, I was really at the last point there anyway, so uh, maybe a little ambitious to do a live uh, VR presentation, um, but 
but uh, there we go. It was a live demo. Apologies for that. I'm not sure what happened, but um, I hope that you managed to see a little bit of the uh, the VR presentation. Um, but yes, so uh, that uh, that was pretty much the end of the uh, the news for ISOSurf 2018. So here we have on the screen just a summary of what we looked at on um, the Class A modeling here, the improvements to diagnosis, uh, the changes to reference manager, and the uh, HMD support, of course, and the infrastructure. So um, here we go. Uh, no surprises here, no big changes. Of course, uh, DSLS 2018X is required for ISOMSERF 2018, uh, running on Windows 7, Windows 10, 64 bits. Um, and we still support the theorem interfaces, of course, using FlexNet. And um, this is the release schedule moving forward. So ISOMSERF 2018.1 will be launched on July 6th. That's the plan. And also uh, point two in November. So uh, here, this is interesting, this orange triangle, ER submission close. So you can see here that we've already passed um, the ISOMSERF 2019 dateline for enhancements there. So if you can submit any enhancements requests now, it's going to appear in ISOMSERF 2020. Of course, it takes time to put all the enhancements into place. So, and that really was the end of my presentation. So I was very close. Apologies for that. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, yeah, so these are, then we were going on to Honorata's slides, which I think she covered already. Is that right, Honorata? Yes, that I did. Um, after this webinar, you will receive tomorrow uh, an email and there you will have also the link to the next webinar and the information where you can rewatch this one. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so if you don't have any more questions, I will close the webinar now. It was a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. And if you have any more questions, feel free to send a mail. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.